The Lord be with you. It is good to be among you and to be gathered together this morning to praise God. So let us join as we stand and sing. Come, now is the time for worship. Let us stand together. themselves uh, and Pastor David is away so usually I'm down there but this morning I'm up here and excited to be with this uh, these great musicians uh, no we hope that this morning you will you will find a sense of centeredness and you connect with God who we come to worship. Thank you. 
here at Orange, we are committed to living in grace, learning in community, and loving through service. That is the vision that we have and, and our hope as we live it out in this space and in the many ministries like the Bazaar that we have going on throughout the week. We have some announcements that we will draw your attention to at the close of our service. Um, but this morning, as I said, our youth are at pilgrimage and David is away. Um, and so we have a special guest preacher with us this morning, Reverend David Harvin. He's a retired United Methodist clergy and a part of our Orange family. So we are excited to hear him proclaim God's word among us. Uh, in the spirit of all that we are and who we come to worship, we offer peace to each other as we greet one another in the name of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another.
Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Blessings to each one. I'm David Park. At this time, the kids can be dismissed or crosswired. Okay. All right. Many blessings. Before I get into the scripture and the message this morning, I do want to uh, remember that today is Veterans Day. And uh, Veterans Day was started uh, as a memorial to those who uh, lost their lives and served in World War I. And here we are in 2018 and still remembering them. Uh, if there are any veterans or persons currently serving in the United States military, uh, would you please stand this morning? <coughs> stand. Let's give them a hand. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Well, this uh, month we are talking about getting happy. You see, uh, the uh, front of your bulletin last week, Corey did a wonderful job talking about being happy in relationship and talking about Ruth and following Naomi and so forth. Uh, today we're talking about being happy in nature. And that's certainly a, a reality for us. All we have to do is look out the window. The gorgeous colors of fall all around us, the bounty of Thanksgiving time. We're going to talk about being happy in nature. If you have your Bibles with you, our first lesson is real easy to find. It's the first book of the Bible, Genesis, talking about creation. And I'm just going to read the first eight verses. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void. Darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, and that was the first day. I'm just going to read through the second day. I'm not going to read all of it. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome and the waters that were above the dome, and it was so, and God called the dome the sky, and there was evening and there was morning. That was the second day. And you know it goes on throughout the creation order in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. I would commend that to you to sometime today take a moment, not too cold, maybe outside or at least looking at nature and read the story of God's creation. And then from the middle of the Bible, also easy to find, 24th Psalm, just these two verses which sum up our relationship to God and nature. The earth is the Lord's and all that's in it, the world and all those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it in the rivers. The word of God for the people of God this day. Thank you. Amen, amen. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and all those that dwell therein. The great thing about nature is that it puts everything in perspective. We go outside at night, we look at the sky, we see the stars around us, and we get a simple but very effective me message. Creation big, me small. <laughs> There's something greater than myself. There's something bigger than myself. As a matter of fact, I'm a part of this huge creation that God has made. Puts everything in perspective. We are part of a larger created order, and as a matter of fact, we have a place in God's created order. The Hebrew people were a nomadic people. They started out in what was Babylon, they came over the crest of 
uh, the ancient crescent. They went into what we now call the Holy Land. They went down into Egypt where they sojourned for many, many years. They came out, were in the desert for 40 years. They finally made it back to their homeland. And all along the way, well, how did they get from one place to the other? God led them. There weren't any maps. They followed the star. Stars were the great directors. It's where you had found north. It's where you found east. It's how you guided yourself from one place to the other. Later, when they settled down into uh, communities and villages, uh, you can go to Israel and see the ancient uh, stone houses where they lived. Just about everyone had a step that went up the side of the house to a flat roof, and people slept on the roof at night because it was hot. What do you do when you're laying on your back and the roof and no lights around? It's pitch black. Watching the stars. God created everything that is. We know our place. Creation big, me small. You know the constellation Orion in the sky? Most of us know what that is. And you know, the three stars that form Orion's belt, you know, the great hunter. Are you with me on this? Those three stars that uh, form Orion's belt are 1,200 light years away. That means the light that we see when we look up in the sky and we see those three stars left there 1,200 years ago. Cosmos big. Very small. You know what a light year is? Everybody, well, a light year is how much uh, light travels in a year. That's true. That's over six trillion miles. One light year. Cosmos big. Nature is all around us. Beautiful leaves, created order, beauty of the colors. God is the creator God. There is a movement uh, within the church, I like it, which is to not just refer to, I have a hard time moving around here. The movement in the church, uh, uh, which I like a lot, uh, uh, talking about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? But also revisioning that a little bit and talking about the Trinity in terms of creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. And I like that, because it's more verb than noun. Creator. God, who is the creator of everything. Jesus, who is the Redeemer, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit, who sustains us through life. God, the great creator. The creator of everything that is. The Old Testament as we talk about being happy in nature, the Old Testament has an interesting word for what we usually translate as happy, as ahre. But it doesn't exactly mean happy like we think of happy. Happy is really an 18th century thought and term. It was a reaction by the Romanticists against the Rationalists, if you want to go into the history of philosophy and so forth. I don't have time for that this morning. But we kind of enshrine the idea of happiness, of course, in our uh, Declaration of Independence, which is an 18th century doctrine. Right? The life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. That was kind of a new idea. Happiness as this sense of emotional well-being. I can do what makes me happy. The Bible talks more in terms of what we've translated as happiness, more as blessedness. God blesses us. Operate. Well-being. Flourishing. Connected with God. And the word in the New Testament that we use for happiness is uh, marikos. So even a bishop of, whenever the bishops in the Greek Orthodox Church take a new uh, name when they're named bishop, and there's a very famous bishop who now is in the Middle East, the Bishop Marikos, his name is Bishop Blessing. Okay? 
Maricos, translated as happy, really means more blessing when, when you look at the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are poor. Blessed are those who seek God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in my name for righteousness' sake. You can translate that just as well as happy are those who are persecuted for God's sake. That, that kind of some cognitive dissonance, isn't it? We're not happy when we're being persecuted. We're not happy when we don't have enough to eat as those who are poor and hungry. What does this word happiness really mean in the New Testament? I think it's better translated and better understood as a sense of content. When we are happy as a part of God's creation, we are content with what we have. We are content in our being. We are not striving for more all the time. There is a lot in the New Testament about that, isn't it? Consider the lilies of the field. They neither spin nor make of themselves cloth, but they are raised better than the emperor. God will take care of you. Jesus tells the story of the rich man who, who uh, is uh, so rich all of his barns are full and he decides to tear down his barns and build bigger barns. And the night that he finishes the last barn, that's the night the angel of death comes to him and says, uh, time to go. When will we, we be content in life with what we have? Look at the widow giving her might. Jesus says, look at all the rich people. They're going up to the treasury. They're throwing their money into the treasury. Who gives the most? The one who gives everything that she has. The widow's might. She's content in who she is and what she gives. Philippians 4, 11 to 13. It's a fantastic passage, but we don't preach on it very much. Paul says, I'm not saying these things I've said before because I am need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have to learn the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all these things through him who gives me strength. <laughs> Being happy, inspired by nature, the Creator God, who calls us to be a co-creator with God, is really all about realizing we have enough. Being content in God's order is a powerful antidote for the addictive acquisitiveness that pervades our culture and seems to seep into our consciousness every day. Want the le Lexus with the leather package? Can't decide whether to get a red one or a green one? Well, get both. All the slick magazines that come into our yard. And I grew up with it as a child. All the slick magazines about this time of the year. All the toys and all the wonderful things that are out there. Be sure to buy, buy, buy more, more, more because it will make you happy. Oh yes, it will make you so happy. David Gehring, good friend of mine, also a retired Methodist preacher, we were talking about this passage and about needing more and wanting more and so forth, and I sent him a picture, I'm kind of a car guy, and I sent him a picture of a new uh, Camaro, they've come out with a 700 horsepower electric motor in it. I said, if I get that, I'll be happy. He says, well, there'll be another one next week. And there was. Now they got a thousand horsepower Dodge Challenger. Huh? Let's get that one. It'll make me happy. I was at a great conference down in Florida a number of years ago, and we were talking about sustainable earth and how we live on this earth with a smaller footprint and so forth. And, Oh, 
old Bishop Joel McDavid, who very aged in the back, could barely hear, stood up with his crooked finger, he pointed up and he says, when will we say we've had enough? That's a critical question. Now. When will we be able to say, let's us live simply so that others can simply live? If the world consumes at the rate of the United States and Europe, if we got the rest of the world up to the consumption rate of the United States and Europe, there would be nothing left. Not a toothpick. We're soaking up the world's resources, which brings us to our role in this created order. We are stewards. We are entrusted with God's bountiful creation. And if we are continue to live on this beautiful planet, we're going to have to come to grips with sustaining this planet. We're going to have to learn to control our acquisitiveness. You cannot continue to blow carbon into the air. Climate is changing. You agree with me on that? Climate's changing? Yeah. Okay, we've had 200 year storms in the last two years. Climate is changing, the seas are rising. I think we'll be okay in this room. I worry about my granddaughter. I worry about that baby. I wonder about what world they're coming into. How do we live simply so that others might simply live? How do we free up resources to clean up this planet? We are co-creators with God. You want to be happy in nature. Step one is the consciousness that nature is big. We are small. We have a place in it. We are not the center of it. We don't own it. We are stewards of it. How then can we free up our resources to live in this world? John Wesley had a three point, he always had three points to everything. That's why all preachers have three point sermons. John Wesley always had three points to everything. He said, what is our rule for life in the world? Make all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Make all you can. He, he was wanted us to be industrious. <coughs> Save all you can. That doesn't mean put it in an IRA. Save all you can. Be saved by not spending. Be frugal. Give all you can. You give much more if you're able to save. A matter of consciousness. One of the spiritual directors I had uh, talking about relationship to the earth, and she said, everybody should go out and stand barefoot on the earth for 10 minutes every day. Standing, not doing anything, not taking out the trash, not picking up sticks, just stand there and be centered on the earth. It's a little bit hard to do it this cold weather, but you can wear thick socks. <laughs> How do we free up resources? How do we live simply so that others might simply live? I like the local food movement. I like churches that have gardens. We could have a garden at this church. We've got a lot of land back here. We could have a community garden, grow food for the things that we have at the church and give it away to the food pantry. We did that at the last church I was a member of. I like churches having uh, times to recycle. Having a recycle party. Bring all your recyclables down to the church. Have a, have a paper cutting party, a shredder. I like solar power. I like hybrid cars. I like gleaning. I like shopping at thrift shores, thrift shop. I like habitat store. What would it mean if uh, we made a covenant at Christmas this year? Next year, year 2019, I will not buy any new clothes. <laughs> Every, if I need some clothes, I'll go to the thrift shop and buy something that's been recycled and that'll go to some good cause. I won't buy a new car, even though I like a new car. But at least a couple of payments that I would have made next year, I'll, I'll stick that in the mission box. What would it mean if 
we made an intentional decision to in some ways in our lives live on less and dedicate that to world hunger, reading programs, whatever your passion is. Nature big, we small. God creator, me steward. I don't need to have all the things that I have. I have more than I need. And I free up something for someone else. I'll finish with a few lines from my favorite poet, Wendell Berry. This poem was written in 1972. Ask the questions that have no answer. Invest in the millennium. Plant sequoias. Say that your main crop is the forest that you did not plant, that you will not live to harvest. Say the leaves of the harvest, when they have rotted into mold, call that profit. Prophesy such return. Put your faith in the two inches of humus that will build under the trees every thousand years. It's a long-term investment. And finally, I, this is the end of this poem. If you want to look it up, it's called the Mad Farmer Liberation Front. It's wonderful. Be like the fox who makes more tracks than necessary, some in the wrong direction. Practice resurrection. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Lord, on this day, we think about your created order. We think about our place in it. We think about all the fabulous blessings that you have given us. And we think about how we can live on less so that we can free up more for others. We think about looking at stars and sky, taking our children out to just stare in wonder. May we be happy in nature because we are content with what you have given us this day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. in that spirit of prayer um, as we lift up this day and acknowledging um, that it is Veterans Day but it's Armistice Day as well and so we're going to uh, lift up a special prayer piece and as um, I say Lord in your mercy I'll ask you to respond hear our prayer so let us go to God in prayer this morning Almighty God for all who have served the cause of peace in our armed forces. For all who have lost loved ones due to war. For all who continue to suffer due to war. For all who long for your peace. For all who dedicate their lives to your peace. For all who bring your comfort to veterans and their families. For all of us called to be messengers of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For all who live in despair, for all who seek healing of body, spirit, and soul, for all who live with great losses due to war, for all who trust in your promises, for all who cling to your words, for all who minister to veterans and survivals with your gospel, for all of us, Call to be messengers of your hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For all whose faith has been wounded by war and violence. For all whose sense of purpose has suffered due to war and violence. For all whose sense of self has been broken. For all whose journey remains incomplete without you. For all who seek completeness in you. For all who lead veterans in their communities to fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, for all whose bodies bear the marks of war, for all whose spirits bear the scars of war, for all whose wounds are bound up in the prison of addiction, for all who have not yet experienced your healing love, 
for all who rely on your healing presence in their lives, for all who bring your healing to veterans and their families, for us called to be messengers of your healing love, Lord, in your mercy, for your gospel of comfort and peace, for your victory over death and promise of everlasting life, for your presence with us always to the end of the age, for your gift of the Spirit who makes us whole, for your gift of peace poured into our hearts at baptism, for your messengers who bring us your good news of love and peace, for your call to help spread the good news with our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer indeed. Amen. This time I'll invite our ushers four to receive our morning tithes and offering. And as you um, feel led to, to stand and join in our offertory, we invite you.
seated. As we uh, close this morning, we just have a few brief announcements. And I know that uh, we have one, Ali Bomer would like to share a little bit uh, about our uh, an upcoming mental health event. And so I'll invite uh, them forward to share with us just uh, a bit about that. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. No, no problem with that. So uh, we're uh, Allison and John Ballmer. We uh, help coordinate one of the life groups that meets just immediately after this service. So we'll plug for that. If you're interested, come on over and join us. We're just right over here. Uh, so on January 12th, we are host. We're bringing in some people to do a mental health first aid training. Uh, this is kind of like it, probably a lot of people will take like first aid, like Red Cross first aid training. We're going to have like put on a tourniquet. And, Call, call the police, uh, call the ambulance, stuff like that. This is like that for mental health. So that if you see somebody who's having some kind of a mental health issue, most of us don't know what to do and wouldn't recognize it even if we saw it. And that's the whole point of this class, is to help you be able to identify when someone's having a crisis and see what you can do to help them get through the first couple of minutes of that, just like putting a compress on somebody on an open wound. And then call 911, get them in touch with social services, somebody who can give them long-term help. Uh, this is a free class. It's open to everyone. Uh, it's not just if you have friends who are not at church. This is a great opportunity for them as well. It's on January 12th. It goes. It's going to be back at Heritage Hut from 8 to 5. Uh, we will be providing lunch. Um, and I miss anything? Oh, yes. And it's also good for uh, uh, if you are a teacher, social worker, or medical professional. This counts as continuing education credit. Yeah, and um, my contact information is in the board. Um, and also, if there's any teenagers, I know they're not here today, but if you think your team might be interested in taking a class, they can take it as well. And just so you know, this is the second of two times we've been offering this, so if you're interested, just please get in touch with us and let us know. Uh, we're going to gauge you know, more of these based on the response to this one. Thanks. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. Also, the youth uh, are having um, a series of bake sales for the next several weeks in order to help fund their mission trip to Jamaica uh, uh, yeah, uh, this summer. And so please uh, stop by and grab some goodies. We have workers back there this morning. Uh, and we also have a series uh, of announcements that are in your bulletin, so we ask that you would check those out. And check out our website, um, look us up on Facebook, Instagram, all those fun places. Uh, and give us a shout. Uh, but let us stand this morning as we close our worship, uh, proclaiming that we are indeed small, creation big, as we sing together beautiful things.
knees this day, knowing at creation big, me small. Let us go forth and be stewards of that knowledge. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.